let's get into why we even have Miss Natasha on um, today. Although we could continue to talk about more trending topics, I mean, there's probably about six or seven that are just yeah, yeah. out there. So we may have to talk about them again next week. Um, you know, and see how you know they've progressed uh, over the next seven days. Um, but as Regina introduced uh, her earlier, she's a media specialist and also has um, four beautiful children. And so, as a devoted mom and a devoted media specialist, she has some insight on how we can keep our kids occupied during the summertime. And it's interesting because before I became um, a work from home mom, the summer was just like any other season for me. Every day we woke up and I took them to camp or daycare or somewhere and I went to work. And so I didn't have to worry about, um, you know, I let somebody else worry about <laughs> what they did and what they ate. <laughs> and so, um, so in the last four years I've had to you know, and I'm, I'm so excited to hear what some of your resources are because now that I am home with three children, um, you know, there are some days that we don't even get out of our PJs, and I'm okay with that. Um, but uh, I definitely want to make sure that their summer is fun and kind of memorable, and um, so I would love to hear, you know, some of the things that we can do with our kids um, over the summer. Okay. Um, basically, I'm going to share um, some websites that may be helpful for you. Um, to work with your children, various ages. Um, some will cover preschool and some will cover your um, elementary age children. Um, do I just click here? Or um, <clears throat> if you want to just call out the, the websites, okay. then what we'll do is we'll gather them up and then uh, just tell us. I, I think it, one of the things that Natasha is going to do is share some resources. And of course, you know, overachievers like we all are. Um, she came up with quite a few of them, but I asked her because she like narrowed it down, maybe to the top four. <laughs> I know I get overly <laughs> zealous when it comes to you know just anything dealing with children because I've been in education for almost 16 years, and um, it's just been my passion, and I just love working with children and my husband said gosh you get so excited Natasha and I said just seeing those little people grow up and become you know successful adults is what I'm you know looking for and I believe their foundation you have to build that foundation from the bottom in order for it to you know happen so I just get real passionate when it comes to these things I'm sorry about that <laughs> Well, you know, when you start to learn as a five-year-old, as a media specialist, I mean, you know, how could you not, like, just have such a <laughs> But um, as, because I told, I asked Regina, how many do you need? Because I have about seven, eight, ten, and she's like, no, Natasha. Ninety-four. Daryl, <laughs> four. Um, but a couple of them I did pull up. Um, I use these because I deal with vendors um, all the time when I order different um, materials for the library mm -hmm. and one of the um, vendors that I deal with is Capstone Publishers and they do have a website um, called Cap CapstoneKids.com and it has different um, uh, links on it that deal with the different characters that they have in their different books um, that they publish within their house and they also have um, link, a link to where you can make things with your kids because my daughter, she loves arts and crafts and her hands. So basically you have to um, reach your children at their, at their learning levels, whether they want to do um, hands-on activities, whether they are visual, you know, those different moda modalities. That's the word that I'm looking for. So um, I kind of have to pull from different resources. But um, they also have um, games, you know, a lot of my Christian is a game player, so they have ed <laughs> educational games, as well as um, quizzes that link to their books. So if you go to your public library and you um, check out a book with Capstone on it, you can actually go to their website and look up that book so your child can take a quiz on that particular book, book and that will let you know if your child is really understanding what he or right. she is reading. So basically, anyone can you know pick up a book called the words, but are they really understanding what they're reading? So I thought that was a very um, 
key, you know, link that could be used on the site right. um, with, you know, quizzing your child. Natasha, I do want to say too is, on just yesterday we went over to the library. No, yesterday, um, Tuesday. We went to the library and signed the kids up for the summer reading program. Exactly. And so looking at your local library, public libraries as resources, uh, is a great place to get some free stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, access to free air conditioning. <laughs> um, and it encourages the kids. The branch we went to was really a kid-friendly branch. And so it encouraged for them to just hang out. And I think we spent maybe an hour and a half there. Um, we probably should have left about 15 minutes a little bit earlier than we did, <laughs> just because they had met the capacity. Right. Um, but, but, yeah, I think that's a, that's, you know, I'm really looking forward to going to visit that site because my girls picked these books out, and some of them I was not really sure, but they mm. wanted them, and so I want to encourage for them to stretch. But right. I also don't want to feel that they're defeating, you know, themselves. Exactly. So, so it's a plus and minus. So what, what's another site? What's another site that you want us to check out this summer? Um, another one that I uh, want you to check out is FunBrain. I don't know if you have ever heard of FunBrain. Um, FunBrain. I've used this for years um, in my classroom. Uh, it has math and reading skills. Um, again, it covers the different um, modalities of children. You can find things in which your children can make as well as um, planned games, but they also link it to educational. Like one that I'm looking at now is called the Grammar Gorillas, and that's going to be very important when it deals with um, Common Core, when we move to the Common Core curriculum. Um, grammar, you know, is kind of something that we used to teach with handwriting, but now they're going to have to kind of teach it a little bit more in isolation because we got away from the isolation. Now we're back, you know, to um, making sure that children know what an adjective is, know what a noun is. So this is some good fundamental pra um, practices for your children. So great. this and, is another great site. That and that was funbrain.com. Fun mm -hmm. okay, that sounds like something KJ would love. Yes, and also math, too. It covers math. Um, like my third grader, he got he was doing multiplication this year, so learning those basic facts. And you right. know how we get away from the fundamental of things, so this different site um, hones in on those skills, so teaching those Oh, things. nice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, another one, I don't know if you guys um, know about Storia. Storia is... Um, through Scholastic, um, that's another publisher that we use. Um, iPads, if you have those iPads, you can download five free books from Storia. Storia, excuse me. Spell now, that, Tasha. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you spell that for me? Um, it's S T O R I A. Storia.com, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's through um, Scholastic. <laughs> and basically, those are ebooks. Um, oh, yes. Um, you can download five free ones. They do give you five free ones, but the other ones you have to pay for. But um, there, it's all. That's a big push too um, within um, the school system where the kids are using more ebooks. Uh -huh. And um, this is one uh, company that I did order some from, and you can, like I said, as well, um, download them to your iPad. And having your kids use iPads is very important, too, because they're going to use them a lot with the Common Core curriculum, um, because all, everything ties into technology. So this is a great and you said that story. Tell me how to spell that one more time. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. um, it's S-T-O-R. I A, and you know I, I like how you said that because um, I think you know Regina and I were actually talking about this the other day and really um, trying to find that balance with our children that you know they they have things and are exposed to things that you know were weren't even an idea when we were growing up and um, and so my daughter my twenty month old um, loves my iPhone and my iPad and can can manage it and find things and do things that I didn't even teach her how to do. Yeah. You know, she even saw me how saw me go to YouTube one time and now she goes to <laughs> now she goes to YouTube, you know, every day 
And, you know, and it's interesting because there's there was a couple things I showed her on YouTube. So whenever she wants to do the song Jesus Loves Me with the sign language mm -hmm. or Minnie Mouse, those are the two things that she equates to the iPad. And so whenever she gets on it, she's got to look at Minnie or do, you know, listen to that song. Um, but it's just amazing how she can navigate through it with really no help and so you know I've definitely tried to use it instead of saying oh I don't want you playing with that exactly. or you know <laughs> um, it, it, that's not gonna work so you know you flip it and yeah she's got a ton of educational things on there all the sign language all of it that I've taught her has been through an app and so now she goes to oh. that app on her own and uh -huh. you know has learned all these words that I'm that I haven't even that I don't even know um, because she just looks at this app all the time. So um, I definitely think instead of fighting it and, you know, oh, they need to write pen and pencil. Like I was talking to my aunt the other day. Oh, but they're not going to know how to write, you know, a letter. And I said, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When is the last time you've gotten a letter that didn't ask for money? <laughs> right. Exactly. And I That's mean, okay. Okay. We yeah, people aren't writing as much as they used to anyway. Everybody's typing, and that's another good um, point that you just made. Um, you're gonna have to more, you know, make your kids type more too, because everything that they will be um, taking on their Common Core test will be on the computer, so they will have wow. to type out all of their answers. So I don't. I know we use type to learn in um, the school system to help them with their typing skills. But if you can find anything to um, help your children with basic, you know, typing skills, I have that's going to be. I have a suggestion. Um, as I've shared with uh, many folks, my uh, oldest daughter, Sims, um, has an IEP and has some challenges, has some uh, learning challenges, and one being dyslexia. And so we know that typing is going to be important for her. She's going to have a lot of use of computer. Um, coming up in the fourth grade. So what they suggested mm -hmm. is this summer we spend time on a website, a website called MapVance, and it's actually a, a, a BBC website. Mm -hmm. And it has these different levels that teach the home row keys, and for each level they get these rewards, and she mm -hmm. really likes it. Um, I had already invested in um, Mavis, Ma Mavis Beacon. Um, but they actually told me Mavis Beacon was being used more for adults and also high schoolers. So the map dance definitely is more age appropriate. And I'm going to see if I can, if it's .com or .org, and see if I could pop it up. Um, I did want to say thanks to Sylvia Global again uh, for allowing for us to share this information. One of the great things is, I don't know if you all have noticed, but I've been popping up on the screen. Uh, some of the websites that Natasha has uh, been sharing with us. And so that's because, you know, Sylvia Global has helped us figure out how to use technology to continue right. to share information um, with devoted moms all over the world. And so Map Dance is going to be uh, my contribution. <laughs> and it is, it, uh, I was going to try to find a link for it. Um, but if you Google Map Dance, I'm sorry, it's Dance Map. So dance is oh. in the activity, um, and map is in how do you find yourself. Dance map, okay. Dance, dance. 